Hey guys, this tutorial we're going to be going over Quick Check, which is an extremely useful library for writing automated tests. Before we get into Quick Check in particular though, let's talk a bit about libraries in general. So we've already seen one library and that's the Prelude. This is a collection of useful code. So this is code that is already written and there for you to use. The Prelude is the standard library. So it's just, it's always there. You don't have to do anything extra to have access to the Prelude. You just start using the Prelude functions. The Prelude is a module. Modules are a software design technique that basically allow you to group together uh, related code. So take this bit of code, for example, like let's say you wanted to create some code to draw different shapes. And you might have a few functions for drawing like rectangles and circles and squares. And you would specify that this is a module and a module name right at the top of the file. And you would specify in this module declaration, which functions you're going to export. Okay. So the idea here is that these are the functions that anybody importing this module would want to use. But then you might also have some functions that are just kind of like helper functions to the code that you're writing right now. So let, let's say like this draw function and you don't want anybody to use it directly, but it's useful to the functions that um, are going to be used. So you wouldn't specify in them in the export, you would hide them away is the idea. So also when importing a module, it's best to only specify the functions you want to input. So whenever you want to import a module, when you want to actually use one of the modules you declared, like this draw shapes mod module, let's say this is in one file. And then in another file, um, we have its own module declaration. So this would be some file like test.hs. And let's say we want to use that code underneath the module declaration, we would put import and the name of the module we want to import. And then we would specify in um, round brackets separated by a comma, which functions we want to import from that module. Let's take a look at the two default modules we get when we create a new stack project. So we get a module lib that has one function inside it, some func that um, basically just prints something to the screen and we export that one function that we have inside this module. And if we go into app main.hs, okay, this is our main program here, okay? So this is where um, if we actually compile the program, this main function is what gets run when you click the resulting program, okay? This is the starting point of any program that um, gets created. And all it does right now is it links, it uses that some func that we imported. And you could even see um, if you installed the Haskell extension, it's suggesting that you change this in import to specify that it only uses some func, that we only want some func here. So we could like add more to this if we wanted to. In fact, we could even create another file. So we could create um, a new file, let's say lib2.hs, right? And we'll put module. And what you should do is you should always call the module name the same thing as the, as the file name. You actually don't have to do this necessarily, um, but it's it's good convention. So if we call it lib2.hs, it should be called lib2, okay? And um, we can make a function here. Let's say we maybe this function, this library, uh, what it's all about is having different sorts of operations for adding stuff and subtracting uh, stuff together that so we'd say like add x, y, x, y, trash, x, y, equals x minus y. Okay. A lot of this is pretty pointless because uh, you could just use plus and minus here, but use your imagination. Pretend this is something more useful. And maybe, um, maybe I only ever want to use, let's say, I have a negation function. And the way I do subtraction is I do add x negative of y. Okay, and I don't really need this, this negation function. This negation function is just something I expect everybody to use sub here. So I write add sub, okay? 
And now let's say I want to use this new module, okay, inside of my lib module here. So I could import lib2. And do you know what? I only want to import the add function. I'm only going to use add here. And then let's change some funk now. Let's make this a bit more interesting. Let's actually use that add function. One plus one equals add one one. Okay, so now we've um, used Let's say we have, if we were to like look at the dependency relationship between these models here, we have the main module, okay? I'll put this in a comment here. Main imports lib, which uses lib2, right? And then maybe in main, I wanna do something like, do you know what? I wanna use lib2 here as well. And I wanna use the sub function in, in this one. So now I can do some funk and okay. And then we could save this. So make sure everything is saved. Load it up into terminal. And do a stack run. Okay, and you see now we've made use of uh, one plus one equals two. Good to know. That's what some func here did. And one minus one equals zero. Okay, that's what this line of code here did. Cool. We're using modules. Now, hopefully you haven't been getting the impression that modules and libraries are the same thing. Not quite. So humor me for a moment. Say you create a few modules. It could actually even be just one module, but usually it's a collection of modules. And you think, man, these modules, are they're useful for more than my project right here. I could probably use this in a bunch of projects. In fact, other people could probably use this in a bunch of different projects. These modules have a bunch of um, really useful functionality. What you could do is you could package all of those modules into a library, okay? And then you could put that library into a package, okay? And make it available um, online. And there's a place, package, uh, where all of the Haskell, where packages of, of all the Haskell libraries that you would ever want um, are available. Um, unfortunately, it's a little annoying to search uh, I would recommend using something called Hoogle to search in instead. So if you go to hoogle.haskell.org, you can search for a variety of functions here. So um, let's say you actually want to just know about uh, one of the functions that are inside the prelude. So if you want to look at map, okay, you can search for map. And it'll pop right up. And the first thing that shows is the um, library that this belongs to, okay? Uh, so it's part of the base library. So the base library is a library that has um, the prelude and a bunch of other modules that you don't have to really do anything special to import. You, you just import, put the import for them there. So they, they come when you download Haskell, they come with basically Haskell, with the installation of the Haskell interpreter and compiler. So you can even click on map too, and you can see maps documentation on hat package here. Okay, it'll bring you to the documentation for map. See, there's some other list operations to the documentation for plus plus and filter and so on. Now, let's say we want to search um, for something that is inside the base um, library. So let's say quick check, which we're about to explore in a second. You'll see that quick check here belongs to the quick check package. It's the first thing here. Okay, so if we click on that, you'll see on hackage, 
there's a package quick check. So quick check, it doesn't just come with Haskell. Okay. It's not automatically um, installed when you install Haskell. So you can't just import quick check. You need to um, basically install it beforehand. And the way we're going to do that is through stack. Now we've been using stack all along, uh, but you might not have realized it's true purpose quite yet, or at least all it's doing for you. So before I talk about that, I want you to make note of something on the quick check page here. There's a lot of different versions of quick check here. If you look at the side, a lot of different versions of quick check and we're on the newest one. And you'll look that quick check has dependencies. These are other libraries that quick check imported. And you'll see that some of these dependencies are like, well, it uses this library past this version and this library past this version. Okay. So you'll, you'll make note that it can be easy to screw stuff up if you don't have all the right versions of the libraries that you need installed. So Haskell stack has its own site stackage. And if you go to Stackage, you go to the home page of Stackage, you'll notice that there are all of these releases. Okay. This LTS releases um, per GHC version. And let's go down and try clicking on one of these. Let's click on this one LTS 14.27. Okay. And if you click on it, you'll see this is a list of packages. Okay. At a specific version. So we can search and we can see this quick check here. Yeah, it is. So we have quick check at version 2.13.2 here. If you go to the top and you'll notice that there's also a version of the Haskell compiler. So GHC, and this will include the Haskell interpreter, um, at 8.6.5. Okay. So GHC and GHCI. All right, 8.6.5 with this LTS. So what is this here? This is, this is basically a collection of packages that are known to work well together at the versions they're at for this version of the compiler. So we call this a resolver, this LTS 14.7 here, 0.27, this resolver. So whenever you, you build a project with stack, what it, what's actually happening is it's using a resolver. If you don't specify a resolver, it just kind of defaults to the newest one. It uses a resolver. So it knows when you say something like, oh, I want to install quick check it knows which version to install. And it's going to make sure that that version works with the version of the compiler that you're using and any of the other libraries that you're using. So if we go back to VS code here and we open up a terminal. So usually the way I've been showing you how to create a new, new Haskell project is I just say, well, CD to wherever you want to put your project and then enter in stack new and whatever you want to call your project. Okay. Like that. Okay. From now on, whenever we want to use a library like quick check, which we're going to be using basically all the time. Now quick check or any other library, uh, for this course, I want you to specify the resolver. Okay. So don't just go, um, creating a new project that uses any old resolver. I want you to specify which resolver you're going to use. So you're going to type in resolver equals LTS dash 14.27. Okay. And if you probably what's going to happen for me, it went quickly, but probably what's going to happen on your computer is it's going to take a little while because it's going to need to download the version of GHC. Okay. That is associated with this resolver. But once that done, once that's done, now you can open up that folder. Okay. Open folder documents, go tests. Okay. And remember these complicated files I mentioned before, go to one of them stack.yaml. And if you scroll down, you'll see resolver and you'll see it's the resolver that you picked here. Okay. So now we have access to this resolver here. And now let's say we want 
to use it we want to use something like quick check what we do is we go to package.yaml here and we scroll down and we go to this dependency section and you see there's already one dependency put here base so this is what gives us prelude Pre prelude is part of the base library okay part of the base package so let's say we want to use let's go back quick check so you search for quick check and then what we need to do is we need to spell quick check exactly like how it's spelled here. Okay. So we need to spell quick check exactly like how it was spelled right here, but without, you don't need to specify the version. Okay. And you would do the same thing for any of these other um, libraries. Like if you wanted to install the, or use um, modules from the quasi text library, you would write just quasi text exactly like how it's written here, but without the hyphen and the version number. So we're going to go over here and we're going to put dash quick check and make sure it's saved. Okay. Do make sure it's saved. And now we can import modules from quick check. So if we go back to, um, Sackage here. Let's click on Quick Check here. And this will give us the documentation from Qu for Quick Check. And you'll see these are the modules that are associated with the Quick Check library. So one of them is test.quickcheck. So that's actually the one um, that we want. Um, and it'll automatically actually include all of these other ones. So let me go to source. And we could say import test.quickcheck. Now we want to check for what we want to import. Remember, we want to put what we want, what we actually need from this test.quickcheck module inside here. So let's go back and let's actually click on test.quickcheck here. And let's take a look. What's inside of the test.quickcheck module? Okay, well, here's a function called just quick check. So this is, this is probably a useful function. In fact, you'll, you'll find out that this is the only function we'll generally bother using, um, from the quick check module. So let's go back and the same way it's spelt here, the exact same way it's spelt here. We'll specify that we want to import quick check and save. And now we're able to use the quick check function. And you actually notice there's some instructions on how to use the quick check function at the top here. This is documentation. Um, so let's actually, let's copy some of this code and just give it a try. Just copy the same code that's here. Okay. So we'll have to copy that proper verse here. Now let's copy this code here. And let's put it in place of our sum func here. So remember our sum func here, this is what gets called by main, right? And if you look at the type of sum func, it's IO empty list. And what do you know? What's the type that quick check returns? It's IO, sorry, not empty list, they're empty brackets. IO empty brackets. We'll talk more about this type later, but for now, just realize that it's the right type. Okay, so we could save this and let's load up the terminal. Let's try running it. That run. Okay, and it outputted plus plus plus. Okay, pass 100 tests, which is the same thing that the documentation said it would output. Awesome, we're able to use Quick Check now. So now that we know how to import Quick Check, let's talk about what Quick Check actually is. And we could focus almost entirely around the one function uh, that it exports, Quick Check. So this Quick Check function, it takes something that you'll notice this is a type variable. So it takes something that's a member of the testable class. Okay. And then it returns some IO which some IO basically just means then it prints something to the screen. The testable type class has many instances, but we don't really need to be concerned about that right now. For now, let's only be concerned with this idea that 
prop here should be some function that returns a bool, okay? And it could be a function that takes any inputs as long as they're part of the arbitrary and show class, which the only consequences of this is really just, for, for us at least, is really just that you can only use it with the prelude types, okay? You could only use it with the def default types like int, bool, float, double, all of those default types that are provided in prelude, it'll work with. If you make your own type, well, then you have to go through the work of making them part of the arbitrary and show class. But let's not worry about that for now. So the point of this quick check function is to take a Boolean function that we consider to be a property. That's why we're calling it prop. And it's a property in that if the test passes, it should always return true. Okay, so it's some property that we want to test about our function. And if it passes, it should always return true. So a good example of this is we could write a function my abs. And don't worry, I'm not trying to sell you the secret to awesome abs. You have to go to my other YouTube channel for that. Um, my abs is going to be an absolute uh, value function. Okay, so it's going to take a number x and it's going to return the absolute value of that number. So if it's um, negative, it'll return the positive version of it. If it's positive, it'll just leave it alone. And let's say we want to write a property to test if my abs is correct. So a good property for this is we are writing a function that takes an input x, applies my abs to it, and then tests if it's bigger than zero. And the idea here is that it should always be bigger than zero. Okay, if it's the absolute value of x, it should always be bigger than zero. So let's go to VS Code and let's give this a try. So we have the my abs function, just like I wrote it there, and the abs prop function. Okay, and we'll open up a terminal. We'll make sure that we're importing test.quickcheck, of course. And let's load this into GAPI. Okay, so the way we would do this is we would call quick check and we give quick check the property abs prop. Okay, and you'll see that it returns failed, falsified after one test, and it outputs zero. So, what it's actually outputting here is what the value of x was where it failed. Okay. Um, so this returns false at zero. And so let's think about this. If we call my abs on zero, what gets returned? Let's give it a try. Zero. Is zero bigger than zero? No, it's not. So of course it failed. Now, so the issue here was actually not that there's a problem with the my abs function, but actually that we screwed up the property. So the property we really want to test is not that my abs is bigger than zero, but that my abs is bigger or equal to zero. So let's save this. Make sure it's saved, reload, and try it again. Um, quick check, abs prop. Okay, so now it says, okay, passed 100 tests. So this is the basics on how to use quick check. An important limitation of quick check that you might have noticed is when we wrote abs prop, okay, we had to um, take as input a value x, okay, that was going to be the same x that my abs takes as input. Now you notice my abs as a function uses type classes. It uses num a and orderable a instead of just being an int or a float or a double, okay. You may think, well, instead of writing, like let's say we didn't put the type signatures here, the default type signature wouldn't have been integer goes to bool. The default type signature, type signature would have been num a, orderable a, a goes to bool. However, quick check can't handle propositions with type class constraints like that. We have to pick a concrete type. So in this instance, I picked integer. Maybe you would have wanted to pick float if you wanted to actually be more thorough. And the idea here is, well, at least I know it works for integer. 
or at least I know it works for float. And actually, probably if I pick float, if it works for float, it's probably also going to work for integer, given the nature of the function. Let's look at some other examples of quick check. Let's try another example. So let's say we want to rate a function my sum, okay? My sum is going to take a list of A and return an A, as long as that A is part of the num class, because what it's going to do is it's going to add these A's together. So my sum of the empty list is going to be zero. My sum of the list X's is going to be X plus my sum X's. Okay. So if we were to look at how this function works, it's going to go through a list. It's going to sum up all the elements of the list. Let's say we want to write a quick check function, a quick check property, I should say, to test this. What would be a good property that would test the correctness of my sum? So a good property would be to take two inputs, x's and y's, okay, two lists here. And what we would check is that my sum of x's plus my sum of y's is equal to my sum of x's plus plus y's. So what we're testing here is that a list split in two, okay, at any point, because what we're going to do is we're going to take the sum of the list put together. So you can consider these two variables being the list split in two at any point, okay, in any two sections added together should be the same as the sum of the list put together. So you'll notice that you might not have come up with this property right away. You have to be a little bit creative about the types of properties that you come up um, in order to test things. But this is a particularly good property, I think. So if we save this and try to load it, let's go to run terminal, and we try stack, GHCI source. Yes. Okay, now let's run quick check some prop. Okay, it was able to pass 100 tests here. Good. It works. Okay, let's do one more example. So, Let's say we create a data type, data vector 2D, Oops. vector 2D, event, end. And we write a function vec add that adds two vector 2Ds to the other. Okay, so we have a vector 2D, zero, y0 and a vector 2d x1 y1 okay and what is this going to look like well this is going to result in a vector 2d x0 plus x1 y0 plus y1 okay and Let's say we write a property that we want to test. Vec zero. And what it does is it takes a v0 as, as input and it says if you vec add v0 to the vector 2d 0, 0 vector, that's going to equal the same thing as v0 in the first place. Okay, so right away we encounter a bit of a problem here. It's saying no instance for e eq vector td. So basically, we can't we can't use the double equals 
because there's no instance for the EQ class. Well, we can get around this in a super easy way for in deriving EQ. Okay. So now we're good so far. So let's load this into GHCI. All right. And let's run vec add, or let's sorry. Let's run the property. So quick check vec zero prop. Okay. It gives us an error. It says no instance for test .quick track .arbitrary .arbitrary vector 2 d So basically this arbitrary class, we need to have an instance of it in order to use v0. So, so this vector, this vec0 prop, it takes a vector 2D as input. So in order to take in order to have a property that takes vector 2D as input and then uses it with quick check, like I was saying before, we need to be part of the arbitrary class. So why don't we try that trick that we did before? Arbitrary. Okay, so now we're going to try and be like, well, make this part of arbitrary as well. And we'll have to import arbitrary here. Now you'll notice it still this still doesn't work. So the issue here is as much as I would like this to work, you can't just do this deriving for any sort of type class. Okay, so you can't do it for arbitrary. So if we wanted to make this work, we would have to write our own instance. So we would have to write instant arbitrary vector 2D where, and now this would be a whole thing. We don't know enough to do this yet. So let's throw that out of the window for now. Is there an easier way around this? So here's an idea. Instead of taking a vector 2D at input as input, let's look at what a vector 2D is. It's just two ints here, right? So let's just take two ints as input, x, y, and then we'll say let v0 equal a vector 2D x, y in this equation here. And we'll just take these two as input. So now let's reload this. And now let's give this a try. Quick check. Back to zero. Prop. Okay, and now it works. So um, this is a bit of a trick, but you find that you can basically get this to work um, whenever instead of making an arbitrary class, except for more complicated recursive types. Then you kind of get stuck. But for probably everything we'll be doing in this course, um, it'll be pretty straightforward to um not actually write instances of arbitrary because that is a bit difficult to do but to just use this sort of trick here where you look at what your type is and what the values are associated with it and you just take those values instead and make one yourself so now that you know how to use quick check you've instantly become a infinitely more powerful programmer because now you're going to be able to test that your functions are actually working correctly i will mention however um, just because you're testing that they work correctly doesn't mean you're proving they work correctly, okay? So now it's good to test. You'll have a lot of confidence in your code, but just because you pass your test doesn't mean you know for sure. You have to be able to write good tests, and even then, you might not know quite for sure. We'll talk a bit about proving programs eventually. Till then, have a good one, guys.